Hi! In a previous video, I bought this broken Fleur thermal camera multimeter from eBay and successfully repaired it. Uh, and there was a company called Pergia actually uh, seen that video and they very kindly asked if I'd like one of these. And they sent me a free P2 Pro thermal camera and teleconverter. So what I thought we'd do is uh, we'd unbox it and we'll compare it against the uh, the Fleur one that I repaired previously. So let's uh, see what's in the box. Right, we've got a little pouch with uh, some things in here. And it's a pouch with a pouch. Right, okay. Well, that must be for to store it. Right, so this is the uh, the actual camera here with the uh, little protective cover on. So we'll take that off. So if I can get a hold of it, there we go. So this is the unit here then, and this is the Android version which plugs into uh, a USB C. Uh, they actually make a Apple version now which plugs into uh, the standard Apple connector on the bottom of Apple phones So there's actually uh, two versions of this uh, now. I say so this is the uh, the P2 Pro So let's see what else is in the box then right, We've got a USB extension lead here right, we'll Put that to one side And in this is a T micro teleconverter, which I believe is a lens, like a macro lens for doing uh, close-ups on things like circuit boards and whatever. So I'll have a look at that as well. It's got a little protective cover on. So we'll just take that off. That looks rather shiny. Right, and I think this just magnetically clips under here like that. If I get the right way around. There we go. Right. Now I'll get this set uh, box out of the way, and these other bits, and that. So this thing's actually tiny. It's advertised as the uh, the smallest um, thermal camera on the market. I mean, it's uh, not very big at all, and it's very lightweight. I mean, it seems solidly built. It's machined aluminium, I would say, from the feel of it. Um. The uh, the resolution on this is supposed to be quite good. Now the Fleur is only 80 by 60 pixels, which gives a total of um, 4,800 pixels on the uh, the sensor. And this one is 256 by 192. So that's a total of 49,152 pixels. So it's more than 10 times the resolution of the, uh, the Fleur one that I've got here. Another interesting thing as well is um, the Fleur one's quite jerky when you're actually um, using it. I mean, I can't record on this, so if I was recording a video with it, I'd have to actually record the screen while I was moving it around. If I plug this one into the phone, I can record on the micro SD or the uh, the internal memory of the, uh, the phone, so I can actually record with this as well. And this one is supposed to do 25 uh, frames a second, whereas the Fleur... I'll actually only do nine. So I think what I'll do, I'll pull the phone out and uh, we'll connect it up and we'll we'll uh, do a bit of a compare. So I've got the software loaded up. This is on a Samsung phone. And that's me wiggling my fingers there. So you can sort of get the uh, an idea of the frame rate and the resolution. I mean, that looks really good to be quite honest with you. Now we'll just comp I'll just switch this off a sec and we'll just compare it to the uh, the Fleur. So I'll switch this on. I mean the Fleur doesn't look too bad there on the screen. Well there's definitely a bit of a... It's definitely not as smooth and responsive. Yeah, the pause is when the uh, the shutter comes across for calibration for the uh, temperature. Both units actually do that. Both sh uh, units have got shutters, so. Right, 
Right, I think I'll try it on uh, some circuit boards and see uh, see what it's like on some circuit boards. Alright, so I've got a Raspberry Pi plugged in here. Uh, and as we can see on the floor, we've got heat coming from the two main ICs there. You can see the USB ports there. Okay, so we'll try the uh, infrared or X infrared as it's called now. Now I've got the teleconverter lens attached to this, so I'll just move this down so we get a bit better in shot. I won't actually see components and things on this. Yeah, we see the IC there. And I'll move over to this chip. You can actually see there's different areas of the chip there. Uh, actually getting hot. I think it's quite interesting when you actually switch it off and then plug it back on. You can actually see the different areas of the uh, chip. You can just see a bit of a, a bit of it there. So I'll just switch it on. And you can see the different areas of the uh, the chip as it's booting up, getting hot there. Just uh, quite interesting. I'll just have a quick get uh, go around the board here. Right, we'll try the uh, flare one again. So I mean, I don't know. Um, I think the other one's definitely got a bit of a clearer picture. Now I've tried recording some video with this, uh, which obviously I can't do on the uh, the Fleur one. Uh, now one of the things that I have noticed is when I record video, it always seems to be in portrait mode. Even if you turn the camera that way. Uh, it flips the, I'll just zoom in a bit so you can see there, it flips the um, the numbers and whatever on the screen but it actually still records in portrait so what I've had to do in the video editing software is actually flip it 90 degrees so you can actually see it correctly so this is a bit of footage that I took in the sheep barn so uh, I was wondering whether you could actually mount this uh, on something like an air rifle perhaps and use it uh, as a kind of rifle scope if you 3d printed a mount or something that was one thought that I had with it and here's a bit of footage from uh, outside you can see the trees and you can see the Land Rover there that was without the uh, the macro lens on uh, this is a bit of footage that I took and it's of the Raspberry Pi and this bit of footage is without the macro lens on and the camera's roughly about six to eight inches away from the PCB and this bit of footage is with the macro lens on so if you want to use it for PCB work I would suggest that you get the version that uh, comes with the uh, the macro micro teleconverter lens. Now, one of the other things that I was a bit disappointed with the software, apart from it always records in portrait mode, um, there wasn't any sound. But if you're recording video, I would have thought you might want to record sound as well if you wanted to, I don't know, um, you record some notes or something as you're recording, perhaps. Um, so I was a little bit of a disappointment on that. 
and when I try to take photographs on it, because uh, it does video and photos and like stills, it wanted permission for precise location, which I wasn't too keen on, but it wouldn't let us take a photograph uh, unless I actually enabled that um, that option. So that's on the uh, the minus sides of the of the thing. Um, on the plus sides as well, uh, it doesn't require any batteries because it takes power from the uh, the phone when you plug it into. Whereas the uh, the Fleur one, you've obviously got to put batteries in it, and it uh, it does eat batteries. Yeah, the batteries don't actually last a, a very long time in this. Uh, one of the other things I thought I'd try is to see what happens uh, if I unplug it from the phone and tried it on a PC. So I connected it up to. Um, Connected up to the uh, USB on uh, one of my PCs and it came up as a, a USB camera. So I've run the, uh, the camera application and these are the results. And I thought it was quite uh, unusual um, that you can see all the, the blood. I mean, that's my arm there. Uh, and you can see all the veins and that and stuff running through it. Just wave to the camera there. So yeah, I thought uh, that was, uh, I don't know, a bit... Unusual, <laughs> let's see if see your veins, but yeah. So in the software, we've got uh, photo mode and video mode. So you can do videos uh, and for still photos. You can change the palette. So you could have sort of like black and white here. So the white is the hot part and black's obviously cold. Uh, we've got like loads of different palettes we can go through here. I think I prefer the uh, the iron red. I think it's called, which is uh, that one there. Um, what else have we got? Uh, we've got a few other options in the software. If I press this one here, I don't know what variable correction does. We can flip the image. Uh, temperature mode. We've got uh, high image quality, wide range, or auto. Uh, I'll just leave it on on that one. How do I get back out of this now? There we go. Image settings, we can change the brightness and contrast. Uh, variable cor correction. I think that must be for uh, how reflective the uh, surface is that you're actually trying to uh, record. Uh, we'll get out of this mode. Right, I think we've got some other settings at the top here. Just press that again. Uh, professional thermometry. Uh, what that does, I had a little play with that. Uh, it lets you do things like, because if you notice uh, on the other display, we had points for the, the hottest, the coldest, and there was a, a centre cross. This lets you add more points or just select one point. If I just press point there and then touch it. Uh, and it'll tell you what temperatures on that point there. You can move them around. So if I move that point up to here, there we go. And it'll tell you the difference between those. Or you can draw a rectangle around an area, and it'll give you the average of uh, what's in the rectangle. Uh, scale, I'm not sure. yeah, that shows the scale at the side there, from the minimum temperature to the maximum. Uh, we'll just get rid of all of those. Right, what else have we got? Uh, I think it's because I've got my finger at the side there. It's uh, throwing the touch screen off a little bit. Turn this off a sec. Advanced image settings. Image optimize or video automatic shutter switch. I'm not sure what those do. I'll just come back out of there. Temperature set. Burn protection. Now, I did um, have a bit of footage of the log burner and it was coming up with a, you know, like a, a warning saying, uh, you know, this is a bit too hot. Uh, so what that does, I think it's to stop you from damaging the sensor if you're uh, recording something that's too hot. Uh, so I just disabled it while I was actually taking a, a little bit of video of the log burner here. Uh, temperature alarm, yeah, that was a bit annoying. What that does, it makes a 
just a beep or a, it plays a little uh, jingle if the temperature is too high or too low depending on which alarm you've got off on and what uh, setting you set it to um, and temperature unit obviously changes between uh, Celsius, Fahrenheit and Kelvin Um, so there's not a great deal of options but I think it's got everything that you probably need and you can go to the gallery and view your um, previous recordings or images now one thing it does let you do as well if you press this icon here just uh, press it there it gives you a real world view of uh, what you're recording at so uh, it's not uh, very good with the macro lens on, I don't think. I'll take this off. There we go. I'll move this uh, out of the way, perhaps. So it'll give you a real world view of what you're looking at. And obviously, that's the, uh, the thermal view of the same thing. So the USB extension lead that uh, comes with it, uh, actually you've got a right angle adapter here that I've purchased off Amazon, which you can plug into it. Uh, you know, it's quite handy if you want to, you know, let's say you have this in a stand and or get this in a confined space to have a look around. You can see the, uh, the pins on that chip there. Obviously that one's a BG, so you can't see the uh, the pins on that one. Well, you can see the uh, the hot spot in the uh, top uh, left hand corner of the chip. I'm I'm quite impressed with it. Um, like I say, I mean, I'm not being sponsored or anything. The only thing they've done is sent us this one for free, which, uh, you know, I'm very grateful for. And uh, I definitely think I'll be using it uh, probably more than the uh, the Fleur. Because, like I said, it's a better resolution. It's got a much better frame rate. Uh, there are a couple of little software glitches, which, you know, I mean, hopefully they'll update that in the future. But, uh, yeah, I'd definitely recommend one of these. So, I mean, if you haven't got a thermal camera and um you're in the market for one i'd definitely uh consider one of these uh infrared or x infrared p2 pros uh the company's actually gave us a link uh to some discount for subscribers and viewers uh, and i'll leave that in the video description so right if you enjoyed this video please give it the thumbs up if you want to see more like it please subscribe any comments or questions please leave it in the comments section below and as always have a great day thanks for watching